Good afternoon, this is Dr. Douglas V. Logan. I'm standing here with Mr. Captain uh, Harold Williams, who is contributing positively to our community. Captain Williams, I appreciate you allowing me to interview you for Positive News Network. It's a blessing to have you on the police department for 24 years, uh, serving Baltimore County, and now a part of the Department of Labor and License and Regulation uh, for the state of Maryland. How you doing today, man? I'm well, I'm well. I'm feeling yeah. really good. Yeah. So God has been blessing you, man. God has opened up doors for you. First off, I, I think we're going to shift this a little bit. How do you see your life if you didn't have Jesus Christ in your life? How would you see your life? I really have to say I, I, I don't know where I would be. Right. Uh, I really couldn't say. Um, you know, I, I've been blessed all my life to have a, a wonderful family, to have a wonderful childhood, and now I'm surrounded with my own wonderful family and great friends like you, so I'm, I'm really thankful for everything. Precious Lord, take, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand, I am tired, Lord knows I get weak, and oh, officer for now 24 years you've seen some of the worst crimes you've witnessed some things you've had to investigate some things what would you tell somebody who's going through some tragedy in their life right now who may be struggling to make uh, the right decisions trying to make the make make the next move to take care of that family that man out there who's one step away from taking his own life maybe using drugs what would you tell that young man not necessarily about the crime but about his relationship with Christ mm -hmm. well, first I'd like to start off by by telling him that anything is possible, anything is possible if you uh, if you just believe. You know, I, I know what, it, what it's like to go through adversity. I know what it's like to to feel like the world is closing in on you. Mm -hmm. But I also know that if it wasn't for my relationship with Jesus Christ, uh, I don't know where I would be. My suggestion to him would be, you know, to to study the Word. To learn it, not only just read it, but you gotta gotta feel it inside. Right. You know, you got you gotta walk it, allow it to be a footprint for yeah. your life, because that's what it has been for me. Absolutely. It's been a, a blueprint for my life. It, it every time I begin to feel low, I begin to feel down about something. The only thing I have to do is open up one of the scriptures, you know, that, that tells me that he's my shield and my buckler. Right. You know, I, I would I would suggest to that to that man or woman or child. You know, every day of your life, surround yourself with some type of positivity, whether it's uh, through the Bible, whether it's through some type of motivational speaking, uh, but just surround yourself around all the public things. Yeah, you know, I, I got to the point where I don't even watch the news anymore because it focused so much on, on negativity. Right. So one of the things that helped me to live uh, so much of a better life, so much of a more stress-free life, right. uh, is to rid myself of that negativity that surrounds us every day. And why should the shadows come? And why should my heart feel so lonely? And long for my heavenly home. When Jesus is my 
your father, your football coach, your, your friend, uh, what inspires you to share your song outside of the workforce, outside of? Well, I only, I only sing songs that I can feel. You know, if I can't feel it, I can't make anyone else feel it. So one of the things that inspire me is that, like, once again, I, I've been blessed all my life. You know, I, I, you know, when I see it, even through the storms that I've been through in my life, I, you know, I really can't complain. Right. So when I see someone down or someone depressed or someone just complaining about everyday life, I just have to let them know you have so much to be thankful for. Right. Even the fact that you just woke up this morning and you took your breath. That's you, it. you woke up, you were able to get out of the bed and, you know, just and so many people now complain about their jobs. But the building here that I work in is uh, 1100 North Utah Street. And uh, we have over 100,000 visitors that come here, you know, a year. Mm -hmm. And they're coming here, either they're, you know, unemployed, looking for unemployment, mm -hmm. or they're about to lose their jobs, or they just got out of prison, or whatever the case may be. But they're looking at us as a, a last resort, mm -hmm. you know, for some type of help. So mm -hmm. I was just suggesting them, if, if you have a job and it's paying your bills on those days when you're not feeling so good about it, just sit down, take time, and, and write down all the good things about yeah. your job. Right. Write down all the good things about your family. Write down all the good things about that check you receive every right. week, and then you'll feel so much better. Why yeah, that's good. should that's good. I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel so lonely and long for my heavenly home? When Jesus is my portion, Community. We see a lot of the crimes is, is black men. I'm proud to know that you're a black man who's taking care of your family, your father, now you're the captain of the police department. You've overcome some things in your life and God is still blessing you, but yet you keep on striving on. What motivates you to make Harold Williams a better person every day? Uh, I'm never satisfied with anything that I do. You know, I always feel as though when there's a uh, first, second, and third place, the second and third place really don't count for me. You know, I'm always striving every day to be better. You know, I know that my sons as well as my daughters are looking at me every day, the mistakes I make, the accomplishments that I make. They're, they're always watching me, as well as the, the football players and everyone around me. I believe in leading by example. You know, so therefore, I always just got to give every every bit of me. I tell them every day you're going to get 200% of me. You know, I don't expect for you to be able to give me 200% of me because I'm going to give you all of me every day. And I can't expect that out of everybody. but. Uh, that's how I feel about life. You know, I feel that my parents have given me everything, right. everything. And I'm not talking about financially. I'm talking about love and the guidance. My my dad led me without even speaking any right. words. 
You know, so just watching his footsteps, watching how he provided for the family. You know, watch how he, he treated his friends, how he always carried himself with respect every day. Mm -hmm. And that's how I'm trying to live my life every day. That's a blessing. Hey, that's Captain it. Williams, I just want to say to you, congratulations. Congratulations on you working 25 years for Baltimore County, successfully retiring, and then coming here and making this place your new home. We thank you, we appreciate you, and we wish you the very best. Thank you. Captain Williams, uh, as a police officer, as a man, who are some of the inspirations that drive you personally uh, to do what you do? I have to say the, uh, the two people that uh, really have inspired my life was my, uh, is my parents. Okay. Of course, my dad, he's no longer with us. Um, he's been gone for now for almost 10 years. But some days it, it seems like it was just yesterday. I, every time I look in the mirror or every time I laugh and sometimes the way I speak, you know, I see him inside. Right. So, you know, it's an inspiration for me, like I say, ever since I was a, a young boy. You know, I watch my parents. Yeah, every, every parent has their little arguments and everything, but they always stayed together. They always uh, picked each other up where the other one was falling down. And those are the things that I've learned. You never look down on a man right. unless you're picking him up. Uh, my work ethic came from both my parents. I mean, of course, my dad, he worked two full-time jobs. Wow. So, man, he, he wasn't in the home a whole lot, but it seemed like, you know, he was always there, okay. even though he wasn't. You know, so one of the things that I always wanted to do is to, you know, be just like my dad. That's you know, but not have my work be in vain. I wanted to spend time with my children like I get a chance now. You know, I was working all those jobs. I was still able to, to coach and, you know, be the loudest one at my daughter's cheerleading games or my other daughter's basketball games wow. or whatever the case may have been. But right. my inspiration is truly, you know, my dad. And, you know, he's he left me here with a great mom. Wow. You know, and my mom is one of them. Most, uh, she's a spectacular woman. When wow. I say that, when I, she's the most giving and loving and just, I mean, all my friends, she's like a mother to them and, you know, people she don't even know. She just want to give. She stacks up, we call her a hoarder, you know, how <laughs> she, she, she puts so many things off to the side just in case somebody right. needs something. She is just truly an amazing lady. Wow. You know, whenever you're feeling down, she always have that great word. And uh, now that my dad is gone, I have to have that great word for her for right. some time. So not only is she my mom, but she's my best friend. Wow. And uh, I just want to say thank you for everything, Mom. You know, uh, I'm so thankful that the Lord, had, you know, chose me to be your son. You know, wow. as well as my other sisters and brothers. But I just thank you so much for everything. I treasure you as my mom. And don't know what I would ever do without you. So thanks again. But those are my inspirations there. Awesome. Whilst I'm being called there in my shadows, to never have sunlight on your face, you were content to let me shine. While you always walk the step behind, I was the one with all the glory. While you were the one with all the strength, I want you to know I know the truth that I will be nothing without you. Did you ever know that you're my hero? In everything I like to be, I can fly higher than and go. Cause you are the way beneath my wings. Thank you. Uh, Harold, this, this, of course I know this is your mom talking. I just want to say a few things about you. <clears throat> and Harold, uh, you know how much I care about you and all the children, your sisters and brothers also. But I just want to talk tonight about um, how uh, proud I am that you've accomplished your goal and you've come this far. Now I want to talk a little bit about Harold. When you were growing up as a little boy, you were always so active. 
You would always ride your big wheels and your bikes with your uh, cousin, John, Michael, and those. So anyway, uh, you went on to school. You finished your grade school. You went to high school. Then you participated. You went to um, wrestler. You went with the wrestling team. You also played football. And then, most of all, when had fashion shows, <laughs> of course, you know you had to participate, which was very great. You always was trying to dress so nice and had Mama to bring you flowers to throw out to the girls, which was so fun. So anyway, through all of that, after you finished high school, then you went into the police department, which you have really enjoyed being there. <clears throat> and it's so good to know that the master has taken you through all the danger that you went through, you know, in the police department. And the good part about it, there was nothing that you thought that was too big or too great that you couldn't accomplish that they would ask you to do. There were lots of times I was really um, worried about uh, what you was going to do when you said, Mom, tomorrow I'm going to do this or that. <clears throat> Me and your dad would always be sort of really worried until you'd come back home that day. But to see you have accomplished all of that after all those years, you know, and um, it's just been so great to see you now leaving the police department to go to another field. But then, Harold, I must tell something about when you were growing up, how you always liked to sing. You and the children always, your sisters and brothers and cousins always uh, were saying at the church and whatever. But I got to give a laugh tonight about you <laughs> because you would go to church on Sundays, but then when you'd come home, you had to have your own service. You would gather up your sisters, your brother, your ne nephews, and everybody else, and you would have your service, and you had to make sure that you had your coat on. And most of all, Harold, <laughs> you had to make sure that they gave you an offering. Now you know. <laughs> so we got so much fun out of that. That was so great, Harold. Then you were so outgoing otherwise. Of course, your, your uh, sister Tammy, she did take the car out one day. I was at work, her dad was away. And um, so she decided that you all wanted something from McDonald's. So of course, Tammy took the car. She went to McDonald's and got, got whatever you wanted, right? So that wasn't enough for you, Harold. So one day I was at work and um, I found out a call came in. And Harold, you had also took the car out for a joyride. Didn't have no license, no anything, had never driven before. And you took my car out, Harold, <laughs> and it cut off on you. So that, that was just a, some moment to show you just how outgoing you are, you were then, and you are now, and you haven't changed one bit. You always would put this hair on your head so everybody would laugh at you. So you just been a fun boy and you're just so crazy about your sisters and your, your brother and your nephews and everybody. Everybody has enjoyed coming to the house. You would always have somebody there in the basement playing the games. And our house has always been like a, um, an open house for the, anybody that wants to come and have a good time. You know, the eating, the laughter and everything. But Harold, I'm just so proud of you tonight, and I've always tried to be there, and I think you, you really went through things because I always pushed you. I was always there and talking to the master, you know, uh, um, hoping that um, things would go well. So as we sang the song, through it all, you know, and God has really brought you through everything that has come up in your life. And I'm so grateful today that you've moved on to another field, another job. And I'm hoping that, I, and I'm almost sure in my mind that uh, you're going to do well because you, you were at the academy. And like we would talk about the young men that you've been training, the uh, uh, cadets. And we would always say, Harold, make sure that you uh, can inspire them to do when they can't do. Let them know that, you know, 
that they can. And those that you meet that think that they just can't accomplish anything, I want you to instill in their mind, you know, that they can do it. And I'm, I'm almost sure that that's what he's still doing today. He's, he's just that type of boy since he's been at this. Um, I know, Harold, now that you're at this new job, I mean, you've been talking the same, you know. You want to uh, do such a good job. You want to be there for everybody. And, uh, and I'm just so grateful to have you as my son. So grateful that you've grown up with um, your sister and your brothers and, and everybody else. And you've just been a good boy. A good boy. And I'm just so proud of you tonight. And <laughs> in my conclusion, I just want to tell you how proud I am of what you have accomplished in life. And I love you so much as being my son. So may God forever bless you and keep you in his care. That is a blessing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for me as a young man, uh, I just see that we need more brothers like you who don't mind sharing that relationship with Christ. Don't mind saying, listen, I'm, I got a badge, I got a job, but I'm also my daddy. I'm a daddy, I'm gonna take care of my family. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna love my children. You know, without that badge, I believe you are that man who is taking care of your family, who is helping out in the community. That's why it's important for me to be able to highlight you for what you do community in our community. Because we need to highlight what brothers are doing, what black men are doing that's positive in the community that you may not hear about on a regular basis. I'm proud of you. And I want to let you know in front of the whole world, man, God has blessed you. And I thank God for your life. And I, I, I pray God's speed upon your life as you continue to do what God has called you to do. Watch out for Mr. Harold, Captain Harold Williams, as he's just been promoted, actually, from Baltimore County to now the Captain, uh, Department of Labor, Licensing and Regulation, Police Department. This young man sings like a bird. You'll see it in the clip. You'll hear it in a few seconds. God bless you all. Thank you for watching another issue of Positive News Network. I'm Dr. Douglas V. Logan. This is Captain Harold Williams. God bless you. Amen. Thank you for all you do. Thank you, man. I sing because I'm happy, and I sing, I sing because I'm free, oh, it's us, it's us. No.